A very hearty afternoon to all the guests present over here. I am Vishal Khatnani from GH Raisoni College of Commerce, Science and Technology. It's a pleasure welcoming you all in the third session of Orange City Literature Fest edition 2, day 2 by SGR Knowledge Foundation. It's the third session and the time for this session will be 40 minutes. We will be now discussing about Cancer Never Kills, the sweet taste of survival and how to experience it with Ms. Rachna Chachi Man. Ratna Chachi Ma'am is a certified cancer nutrition coach and is PhD holistic nutrition. Her practice spans 27 countries. She is best known for her work with cancer and autoimmune patients. She has been writing on health for 20 years for mainstream newspapers and magazines and has been extensively interviewed in media. She has authored three books. This session will be moderated by Dr. Shakti Sharma. Dr. Shakti Sharma is a doctor, doctorate in food and nutrition and has qualified UGC net. She has received her master's degree with gold medal in food and nutrition from Rani Durgawati University, Jabalpur. She has subsequently completed her internship from uh, Ames, New Delhi and Choitram Hospital, Indore. She regularly contributes in print and digital media related to diet health and wellness. Her, post, uh, her passion turned into profession and has profound contribute to, to the book for upcoming home scientists, nutrition and food scientists. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Vishal. To begin with today's session, the three important words that can change a person's life are, you have cancer. Yes, with these three simple words, everything changes in a person's life and it's not only the person but his entire family is influenced they experience a different life and have to face a number of challenges recently in the present decade the diagnosis of cancer has come up with recent changes there has been a great advances in the oncology treatment prevention and diagnosis but all treatment strategies do not provide same support to every individual. As our understanding in cancer continues, we have come up with a holistic approach. Listeners, I would begin my today's session by saying a famous quote from Thomas Edison. He said, the doctors of the future will no longer treat human frame with medicines, but rather prevent and cure disease with nutrition. And one such person who has healed herself and has helped several patients heal through holistic approach is Ms. Rachna. I welcome you, Ms. Rachna, on today's session. Thank you. Thank you. I think I started. So to begin with Rachna ma'am, uh, I've, I've been through your book uh, and the book you beautifully says that uh, if you're not sick, that doesn't mean you're healthy. So how do you explain this? Uh, well, Dr. Shakti, thank you for such a wonderful uh, introduction. Uh, I think it stems also from a personal experience to start with. I was uh, not sick. Uh, I was following a healthy lifestyle, quote unquote healthy lifestyle from the perspective of what people look at as a healthy lifestyle. I used to exercise regularly. Uh, I used to eat my fruits, eat vegetables. Uh, and uh, 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 yet I got rheumatoid arthritis, which is an incurable condition. It's an autoimmune disease and uh, the treatment in medical science is only via suppressing inflammation, suppressing uh, pain, and it causes a lot of chronic fatigue, brain fog, and ultimately the side effects of medications can cause multiple alter. And the average life of uh, someone with an autoimmune condition on these kind of medications is early to mid 60s. So at that point, uh, when I got my diagnosis, 
um, I was following exactly uh, what I have written in my book. I was not sick, but I did not examine the fact that I was healthy. Uh, being healthy is being cognitive of not just your physical nutrition. And I was doing the same as well. So uh, when people say we eat right and we exercise, they're missing, they're, they're following only 50%. They're missing two big elements of nutrition, uh, which are connected to emotional nutrition. One of them is sleep. A minimum of seven to eight hours of sleep every single day uh, will calm your heart, calm your mind calm your brain, reduce your anxiety levels and repair your digestive process. And the second is uh, your response to stress, uh, which again, all of us miss out. So we can eat well, we always give the excuse of having um, a lot of work and uh, a lot of things on our plate, uh, which is why we can only do some amount of exercise, but taking out time for uh, breath work, which is pranayam, cooling breath works, changes our response to stress. So when you are saying that, uh, you know, uh, I I don't need this or I don't need that because I don't have any issues to everybody who is watching, step back and examine yourself and ask yourself, am I sleeping seven to eight hours every day? Um, is my response to stress poor or good? If it is poor, then, you know, a lot of people around you will that you snap at them, you lose your temper. Uh, that is a clear indicator of response of stress. Uh, the third thing is uh, uh, during stress, do you stress, uh, do stress substance abuse? Uh, so stress substance abuse is overeating, eating the wrong foods, uh, extra alcohol, cigarettes, substance abuses. Food and excessive food is also substance abuse. A lot of us are in denial about the the fact that food has the same reaction as any substance abuse. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, so look at and examine and be honest with yourself about this. Just because today you don't have hypertension or uh, high cholesterol or a heart issue type 2 diabetes does not mean that the inflammation is not building up inside you. We all know that inflammation is the root cause of all diseases. How does inflammation build up? Because you are ignoring both physical and emotional nutrition, which is what we call nutrition. That's why I wrote that. Yeah. So, ma'am, you always feel that uh, the changing lifestyle is a major contributing factor to the development of increased incidence of cancer nowadays. So, which factors do you think the young generation should actually focus on to prevent this cancer? Because, Shakti. you know, yeah, 95% cancers are actually modifiable. Absolutely. Shakti, can you tell me which uh, which child or teenager sleeps for uh, 9 hours? Yeah. <laughs> Who sleeps before 2 nowadays? <laughs> it's not a question of before 2. It's a question of a regimented, structured life that we have. You know, yesterday we had uh, our award ceremony. We have these annual health awards and our awards are dedicated to the uh, to spreading awareness for childhood cancer. Okay. Now, childhood cancer across the world, there are 300,000 children who get cancer uh, across the world every single year. The problem is that it is curable, but in a country like India, only 20% survive. Yes. Why? Because of poor hygiene, poor nutrition, lack of facilities in smaller towns. Now, the first two can easily be uh, tackled with uh, awareness levels increasing. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, in your book, so uh, what I felt the pain was that he, unfortunately, when I lost my father in cancer, uh, there's a very line which I could relate, and it was like, uh, I'm going to stop it. My doctor says I cannot, but this is not the quality of life I wanted. So, basically, ma'am, my question is ki, how do you think that the Western medicine is different from the holistic healing? And even the Western world is moving towards holistic healing now. Absolutely. That's what we call integrative medicine. Uh, there are a lot of doctors, MPs, uh, who believe in integrative medicine and are following. That is the path that I also follow. When a cancer patient comes to me, I don't say don't do chemotherapy. Yes. 
I always say that whether you take on any treatment or not from the doctor that can be toxic but can save your life, not doing holistic anti-cancer nutrition is not an option. It's the anti-cancer holistic nutrition increases chances of survival, uh, quality of life, uh, uh, reduces chances of recurrence. So these are the things that we look at. We don't look at a five-year survival rate like oncologists look at. For them, success is measured with a five-year survival rate. For us, success is measured with, will this person have a good quality of life in these five years? Uh, will this person reduce the chances of recurrence of cancer in these five years? Will this person outlive these five years? Um, will this person... Uh, uh, beat inflammation, other inflammatory diseases because when you are having anti-cancer holistic nutrition, you are at the top of the pyramid in terms of uh, uh, optimum nutrition. Yes. At that level, then the other diseases also don't touch you. Right. Okay. So, ma'am, like uh, uh, you are an, a live example of somebody who has used holistic approach and healed rheumatoid arthritis. So I would love you to share your experience when you were going through that pain and how you actually motivated yourself to change your conventional therapy to a holistic therapy. Uh, so this was so I was diagnosed exactly 14 years ago uh, in uh, November 2006, and uh, uh, every patient that I have treated with rheumatoid arthritis has been through a similar journey. Uh, in their uh, lack of acceptance uh, right in the beginning. And I had the same. I had a lack of acceptance that at a young age, I had this kind of a condition where I would be put on chemotherapy drugs, steroids, and immunosuppressants. Um, I read up about it and I realized that they were toxic. And the very fact that my rheumatologist would tell me to get blood tests for my liver and kidney function tests done every two months, was because these drugs can uh, cause harm to these organs, which are very important for detoxification of the body. Um, things were still in control till uh, till uh, uh, 2007, uh, late 2007, and uh, after that the drugs were working. So, so my pain levels were very extreme, and uh, in my first book, Restore, I have written about that experience as well. And uh, the, you know, without any uh, local anesthesia, I was uh, injected with 13 injections in my bones, uh, my, my knuckles and my wrist and one elbow um, to reduce my pain levels. Um, I think that was the most traumatic experience of my life from a pure physical pain perspective. And uh, Shakti, as a, as a woman, I will uh, share this with you. I've had a 36-hour labor with my daughter, but it was nothing oh in comparison to the pain that I went through when those injections were jabbed in my knuckles right through my bone. And some of them could not go through because of the extreme swelling. Yes. So they to be jabbed and re -jabbed and re -jabbed. Yes. Uh, my, my husband and my daughter, my daughter at that age was uh, almost uh, 10. She was waiting outside uh, the host, you know, in, in the reception area, and I was way inside, and both of them could hear my scream. And I'm not the kind of person who generally screams in pain. Actually, okay. Uh -huh. So that was that was my turning point because when I uh, went through that kind of pain, and in my mind, I think I passed out for three days, but I was told by my family that. No, I was about. I was going to the bathroom. I was, you know, having minimal conversation. But I'm completely brain fogged about those three days. When the clarity appeared and I woke up mentally, woke up. That's when I decided, saying, "This is no way to live." You know, if I have to go through these drugs uh, as a fallback option, I will. But there has to be a better way. So the pain drove me. Right. I think many people would be able to relate to your story because whenever there is inflammation in the body and uh, you're in a vulnerable condition and remember in your book you say Ki we can reverse this inflammation. Uh, since we have you on the board today, uh, what are your practical tips to the listeners Ki how they can stop inflammation to actually occur in their body? Uh, there are actually very simple things to do to uh, keep your inflammation levels under control. 
and most people who follow a healthy lifestyle don't end up doing that i had talked about uh, two of them uh, right in the beginning so first we look at uh, the physical nutrition right uh, please look at your plate and be honest with yourself on a daily basis you are eating your vegetables uh, like a like a garnish like a chutney actually yes vegetables uh, uh, and i'm not you know when we say plant based diet a lot of people look at lentils and pulses which are actually acidic uh, so large quantity of lentils and pulses can harm you can cause bone pain um you know, wheat nowadays is gmo wheat uh, so uh, which is why a lot of people who are, do not have celiac disease are also gluten intolerant and showing symptoms of gluten intolerance because of the gmo wheat uh, so today we've got to say what is the one thing that is going to flush out inflammation from the body it is vegetables and fruits amazing you said ma'am and i really relate to this ma'am i always ask people ki when was the last fruit you had so women normally say ki it's on the fast मंगलवार का फास्ट है तो आई टेक फ्रूट्स सो मैम इज राइटली सेड इट्स जस्ट अ गार्निश इन अस डाइट नाउडेज मैम डू यू थिंक द इंक्रीजिंग फैट डाइट आल्सो अफेक्ट द हेल्थ स्टेटस एब्सोल्युटली आई फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एम एन एडवोकेटर अगेंस्ट एनी फैट डाइट बिकॉज़ व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट एनी लाइफस्टाइल चेंज नो कैलोरीज क्रिएटेड इक्वल uh no uh, effect of any nutrient is created equal so calorie in calorie out is the biggest myth so you know calorie restriction is a diet i am against because the same calories in a burger will be harmful for you and the same calorie in a heap full of vegetables with some white rice and you know white rice has got a bad name but white rice is a wonderful prebiotic for people with a compromised gut uh, and uh, some uh, good unsaturated fats that bowl will have the same calories as a veg burger but right. those, if you eat those every day you will lose weight but if you eat the burger you will gain weight so it is not the calories it is the construct of what you eat first of all secondly in keto diet we have already seen i think a couple of months ago there was an actress who passed away because of kidney failure uh, because she was on a keto diet yes any kind of high uh, high amounts of protein will affect the kidneys we've got many many cases of people with kidney issues who have gone on a keto diet please don't do this please stay in balance with yourself mind body soul balance has a meaning it means in the body the right physical nutrition has to go in a balanced manner in the mind your response to stress has changed it has to change in the right uh, uh, you know balance and when both these things are in sync with each other that is where, where that is where the soul comes in absolutely ma'am do you also promote the ayurveda concept of holistic healing now that uh, the timing of eating affects you uh, the sleep affects you so what is the ayurveda mantra you give to the clients that you should follow including yoga as well yeah so so i i am not uh, i am a certain yoga teacher Okay. Uh, not ayurveda i am a nutrition cancer nutrition and yoga uh, certified teacher so i will talk about those as you know you, if people don't want to follow anything at all they should follow common sense when you are when you are going to go to sleep your stomach should be slightly empty because otherwise the uh, heavy digestion is going to cause uh, poor sleep quality which means that if you sleep by 10 pm your dinner should be done by 7 pm if you sleep by 11 your dinner should be done by 8 pm uh, that's the thumb rule that everybody who wants to be healthy should follow uh, if you don't follow that then those 7 8 hours of sleep is not going to be able to help you digest your food absorb your nutrients and expel the toxins remember all three processes are important so uh, please follow that and- and there is an old saying you know our uh, uh, king's breakfast queen's lunch and beggar's dinner yes every time somebody or the other comes and says no this is not right eat at this time eat this much eat two meals we are not made like that everybody who has followed any of these fads has come to me and with some problems or the other suddenly after you know 20 years of eating a little bit of animal protein everybody people start going vegan and eating too many lentils Yes. you will start facing bone pain acidity chronic fatigue 
so so look at what is the balance for yourself vegetarian okay. so eat animal protein you know milk and milk products are animal protein yes okay. take it from 5 to 10% of your diet only if you are a non vegetarian or vegetarian a 90 to 95% plant based diet you cannot go wrong with in terms of diseases absolutely ma'am uh, racha in, in this interesting conversation like you say ki cancer doesn't kill yes so it is the sweet taste of uh, longevity so how yes. do you explain this that uh, is so shakti if you read my book and for those of you who haven't uh, my book is called you can beat cancer uh, by jaco publishing it is uh, available on amazon anywhere in your country uh, it is available uh, in india it is on amazon dot in and uh, uh, this book has case studies of my patients who have come to me with late stage cancers um, poor prognosis first poor diagnosis then poor prognosis and who are doing very well even today what did i do uh, differently uh, for them was push them towards saying that holistic nutrition is not optional the only way that you survive deadly disease remember that heart disease cardiovascular disease and heart attacks kill more people than cancer kills yes but if you don't say oh my god i have high cholesterol or i have hypertension because that increases my risk for a heart attack but people will have that fear about cancer so mm-hmm. what did i do i took out the fear and that is a mission that i have been on since the book came out i also have um, you know conversations around dialogues around cancer uh, once or twice a month with the public across my various social media channels to i keep saying it's just a disease you nourish yourself you will not only survive but you will have a good quality of life and you will be able to fulfill your dreams and reduce chances of recurrence because chances of recurrence are very high yes most patients so some case studies are already there shakti in in yeah i have been through this and this book is available on kindle as well as i have said it's a beautiful book uh, when you have actually talked about the pain of the patients but question there always arises a question ki when this world is moving towards conventional treatment how do you actually convince people to actually join for an holistic approach you know the fear of word cancer itself is such a big word so i can convince so please understand that somebody who is going through cancer is so fearful that he or she is willing to follow anything for survival okay. so they can understand the mindset or uh, and emotional trauma that a person with cancer di- with a cancer diagnosis is going through they are they have heard the doctor they will do their research their family members will do their research um, somehow they come upon my profile when they do their research they get in touch with me and it's not an option to start my treatment if they come to me and sign up with me because then it means a rigorous lifestyle change it reducing the side effects of chemotherapy uh, in many patients i have also advised them against radiation because radiation is clinically documented to uh, cause secondary cancers after 7 to 10 years now your doctors uh, uh, you know target for you is 5 year survival rate so they are not looking at 7 years and they they want to save your life today so they are already stressed about wanting to save your life today but somebody like me will look at a 7 year 10 year 20 year survival rate and say take informed decisions take balanced decisions if you read there is a case of dipali uh, who uh, who had this issue uh, with radiation my own father had uh, an issue with radiation in terms of side effects uh, and i have put clinical data in the book uh, which people can read uh, uh, to understand this better uh, yes. so yeah in your book you have said ki uh, well a person is on radiation therapy the side effects of radiation therapy are so strong and if the immunity is not that would build he might not be able to take the therapy also because it is killing the good cells as well so as listeners are there I want you to please comment ki how important is nutrition during the therapies which are going on basically it's chemotherapy or radiation therapy and how actually they can start improving the nutrition of the patient so shakti first of all radiation is uh, only localized radiation is right. not 
suppresses the immune system. It is chemotherapy that suppresses, suppresses the immune system. Radiation burns the local area. So the reason that there is a high chance of a secondary cancer is because if somebody has got breast cancer and they're burning the chest area, then the lungs and the thyroid uh, and the esophagus are also burned. Now the wounds of that uh, over a period of a few years can become cancerous if your lifestyle is uh, is compromised or if your stress levels are high. Um, stress to trigger secondary cancer, stress to trigger primary cancer is a reality which I've seen time and time again. With every case that comes to me, um, I always ask, there is always an incident uh, which has flared up the inflammation levels and flared up the cancer. Uh, either it's a series of incidents or it is um, a denial of uh, being in a toxic situation. Each and every time that I have treated a cancer patient or any other chronic disease, even for autoimmune conditions, this is true. There yeah. has been stress uh, that the person is carrying for a long, long time and there are unresolved issues inside. So when you're looking at optimum nutrition, which can beat uh, uh, or reduce chances of cancer or any other uh, uh, chronic health condition, please remember that changing your response to stress is number one. And how do you change your response to stress? At a physical level, you can change it by doing moderate exercise, by doing cooling pranayams like Anulom Vilom for 15 minutes daily. Uh, in an environment, in a room that has got a few plants, because our pollution levels are also very high right now, uh, you don't want to be taking in the uh, you know, polluted particles. Uh, and you need to have your vegetables with good fats, which will reduce your response to stress and remap your brain neurons. So these things are extremely important and they're so simple to do. In terms of protecting immunity during COVID times uh, right now also, um, please take your vitamin C and zinc. Everybody is focused on vitamin C. I, I'll say, you know, as per WHO, 1.9 billion people are deficit in zinc, which protects you, uh, your immune system, which is also essential if you want to reduce your risk of cancer. So if COVID doesn't scare you, cancer will scare you, please take zinc 15 mg twice a day if you feel that you have compromised uh, uh, immune system. Uh, you must have your vitamin D and A. Again, vitamin A as an all-soluble vitamin is not talked about very much. There are enough uh, studies uh, that have come out that right from the beginning, and you know, I was talking to Dr. Taruna Madan yesterday. She's a scientist with ICMR. Um, recently also there was a paper uh, where she talked about vitamin A since child mapping your important in every function. So A, B, uh, along with that good fats like omega-3 uh, and uh, zinc and vitamin C. These are the five things, uh, nutrients that you have to take. Of course, if you are deficit in B12, you can take adequate doses of that. Um, uh, at an emotional le uh, nutrition level, your sleep and your breath work is what is going to reduce inflammation and reduce your risk of cancer. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Rachna, it's another thing is that Kisan, you are on a mission to actually promote holistic healing, to give a better quality of life to the people who are fighting cancer or inflammation in general also. But what actually made you write a book on this? What prompted you that there should be a book on this and people awareness should be increased? Uh, I saw a lot of uh, cases coming to me before I got certified as a cancer coach. Uh, and the first case that I reversed was my own father. Uh, when he had late stage prostate cancer. And uh, that's and when the cases started coming is when I realized that, okay, first of all, I need to, I am a certified nutritional therapist. I am WHO certified for malnutrition in uh, infants and children. Uh, but this is specialization. So I need to do the specialization. So I went ahead and I did it and the cases started tumbling in literally. Shakti, the number of cancer cases are increasing rapidly across the world and I was not able to fulfill um, everybody's healing requirements because there are only 24 hours in a, in a day and as an autoimmune patient, I always follow what I preach. 
as well i sleep for 8 hours a day otherwise i will get pain yeah so uh, i said okay i am going to write a book on uh, for every patient and even today when anybody asks me for a consultation i say first read my book yeah 99% of the cases you will not need my consultation you can Absolutely. just start with it. there are 100 plus recipes anti cancer recipes that people can follow if they find life very boring with you know a lot of people think that eating uh, healthy food is eating bland food and you and I both know as nutrition experts that that's not true diet food is not boring food that is for sure i agree to you ma'am uh, but since we are on this therapy talking so what do you think how people can actually identify that they are also landing into inflammation it is not we should wait for the inflammation to come we can identify through symptoms that my body is getting inflammation and i can make changes sure so if you're waking up every morning and you're not feeling fresh that's your first symptom even if you slept for eight hours and you're not fresh that's your first symptom the second uh, symptom is that uh, your sleep is not sound sleep the third is that you get acidity attacks often uh, so, or some stomach issues. It could be acidity, it could be bloating, it could be constipation, or you could alternate between these three. Uh, but that is happening often. Um, the fourth is that your personality of the kind of person you used to be has started to change. Now that's, that's a very tricky one. Uh, and yeah. you know, I, I actually, my next book, uh, which is releasing in the first week of January, is is on that. It's it's called Alive, and uh, uh, it talks about how when your brain mapping changes, the first indication is this person used to be so chilled out. Yeah, why is he just flipping and you know yelling at me, or why is she just uh, you know behaving like this? There is a reason when you're not unwell, when you're not well inside, there is some way that the human body will react. And uh, change in moods is one of the biggest indicators. So for everybody who uh, is in families, they see their loved one's behavior changing. Please look at that as an indication of inflammation. Right. Uh, check for these symptoms, you know, check if this person needs more sleep, more rest, more me time. Nobody uh you know gives uh, any emphasis to me time just spending time with yourself liking your company listening to music everyone says oh i don't have time i don't have time if you don't make time for yourself then the disease and inflammation is going to crawl up absolutely absolutely yeah. and uh, once it is diagnosed um so you feel it, it is once diagnosed they should first identify the change in their sleep pattern and uh, identify the change in their diet and they should also start with some exercise so Modern. what is the uh, what is the actual recommendation you should say to stay healthy at least for kids who are listening this session and they always come and say ki how much work i should do because i think some somewhere sports is also missing nowadays because of covid situation the kids are locked inside the home only now so what is your approach to kids? How can they develop a healthy attitude towards life? So kids do not hurt what you tell them. Kids will do what the parents do. So what is the lifestyle of the parents? When yeah. five, six people are locked up in a COVID situation, if the lifestyle of that household or at least two of the leading members of that household is healthy, automatically the rest of the family is going to follow. So if on the lunch and dinner there are vegetables to eat, uh, kids, are, kids are never going to go hungry. They are going to throw a tantrum once, twice, thrice. For fourth time, they will eat that. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of TV watching. You can watch TV while doing on-the-spot walking. You can watch TV while doing stretches. You can watch TV while doing weights. You can watch TV while doing yoga. You, I'm not asking you to not watch TV. You can divert your mind to watch. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I I do my yoga while watching shows. Uh, so it's it's uh, sometimes I do it while listening to Sufi music. Uh, it depends on what works for you. But take aside that one hour every day of moderate exercise. Don't do excessive exercise because excessive exercise also causes oxidative stress, which again increases inflammation. Okay. So everything in life 
in your day has to be structured in a balanced and moderate manner and being healthy emotionally and spiritually is also equally important so it will flow in it will flow in the moment you see people who have an unstructured life if they get the structure of balance eating in a in moderation not too much not too little eating more vegetables mm -hmm. fruits doing moderate exercise sleeping 7 to 8 hours a day the moment this physical balance comes you know, the the rest of it the will start flowing in because suddenly they will start becoming more aware of themselves in in ayurveda and yoga we have the concept of gross body right mm -hmm. now you are living in the gross body get in touch that inward get in touch with yourself yourself that, yeah that can only happen when you follow this structure yes holistic living is not only about eating proper but about understanding your body and going in harmony with your body yes uh, rachan has one question from the viewers who are listening to us today and he says ki people do, who don't consume alcohol and even don't smoke even they are diagnosed with cancer of course i have a uh, pious vegetarians who have never harmed an ant also coming to me with a cancer diagnosis it is not about <laughs> what uh, whether you do something or not in terms of um uh quantities or things it's always about balance yes <clears throat> so it's said my book is there are clinical studies on red wine being anti cancer there is no benefit of uh, smoking that everybody knows mm. but alcohol in moderation when i say in moderation the guidelines are um one glass of wine every day or 30 ml of hard liquor i am not a propagator of hard liquor so i will not say that but these are the guidelines uh, which are there which prove uh, that you have uh, <clears throat> you have, you will have a healthier heart you will have lower blood pressure lower inflammation if you do that but yes. only doing that is not going to work yeah you have to also go back to exactly what i said during the entire conversation have your fruits have your vegetables moderate exercise do your 15 minutes anulom vilom sleep for 8 hours i these yes. are your pillars you cannot uh, you know miss those people who have no bad habits people who are vegetarians and who get cancer have a poor risk of stress and uh, they have been eating their vegetables as a garnishing yeah and they have had an incident a lot of the people i have seen who are beautiful souls injured souls who have had cancer have been caregivers to chronic patients yes yeah as ma'am has rightly said it is not only the alcohol or smoking which affects the body cells because malignancy is uncontrolled growth either there are various factors which affect the cause of cancer so as rightly said inflammation is one important factor so you should listen to your body and uh, as a patient people always think ki maine to zindagi bhar kuch kiya hi nahi aur fir mujhe cancer ho gaya so better why not i also indulge in all these things see then so, they go to the extreme shakti so the the yeah, extreme the issue is that the pendulum shifts you have to keep the pendulum stationary and just going very slightly here and there so either they don't do anything or and then they uh, resent others who are enjoying themselves which is which is a poor response to stress or they do everything which is poor nutrition you have to be in the center gratitude will not come till you are not grounded in the center so uh, to end today's session i would ra rather say ki you just comment on what is the importance of actually pranayam in healing the body because uh, when it comes to yoga people always think it's little boring but they don't understand ki simply doing pranayam alom vilom and it is actually increasing the vital organs parts in a body so what is your comment on pranayam and how important it is for us uh, so today if you are uh... Uh, everybody is stressed out first of all it's it's a poor judgment for us to say what will what stress will a child have or a teenager have mm -hmm. they are stressed out themselves anulom vilom is a balancing body mind balance pranayam in terms of physical benefits it repairs your digestive system it reduces your blood pressure uh, it reduces inflammation levels and uh, uh, it 
uh, calms down uh, your response. So just balancing yourself with this beautiful pranayam and it's, you know, don't do it for 10 counts, 20 counts. That's cheating yourself. Don't shortchange yourself. Yes. Please do it for 15 minutes at a stretch. Please do it as per uh, use logic. You know, your room needs to be full of plants during the day. Why? Because you, you are oxygenating yourself. More oxygen in the body means uh, a better immune system. Uh, less response to stress means a better immune system. Less response to fear means a better immune system. Fear suppresses our immune system. Today, whether we look at cancer or COVID, everybody is fearful. Just doing this pranayam is going to start calming your responses or reactions to these things. So every every two feet, you should have two or three plants uh, in the room mm -hmm. that you are doing uh, the pranayam. And those plants ideally should be succulent plants. Do not keep plants in a bedroom while sleeping unless if it is aloe vera plant which emits oxygen 24 hours. Uh, because at night uh, plants uh, emit, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, ga the gases that we need are oxygen. And uh, we need to sit in the day in a room full of plants or an environment full of plants. If you are lucky enough to have that kind of environment, do it close to nature. It's just 15 minutes of your time. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rachna. It was wonderful talking to you. And I hope all the listeners were benefited with your abundance of knowledge that you have. And looking forward to having another session with you. I conclude today's session and I hand over the session to the anchor for today's session. Please, Vishal, take over the session. Thank Thanks. you so much, Rachna. Twenty years of existence, two universities, 23 educational institutes, offering 137 courses, Rai Sony Group of Institutions, a vision beyond.